Now let's look at a cylinder. We're going to examine this cylindrical bottle shape here. So once again, we have our three-quarter view lighting. It's coming from the side and the top. Um, so where it's striking the bottle, we see a bright highlight, and then there's a shadow area, and we have a, again, a continuous surface. And if I put my hand on the bottle, I would be able to just move my hand right around the bottle. So the light kind of spreads, and there's no sharp division between the shadow and the light. Light has to travel in straight lines. So one effect of that is that when it gets to the fattest part of the bottle, imagine the bottle's coming out towards us, right? The light gets to the fattest part of the bottle. It keeps going. All of the part that curves around the bottle here is in shadow. The light can't bend around and illuminate that curved surface. Let's see what that does as we draw this. I'm going to start off with my eraser. And I'm going to look at where the brightest part of the bottle is. So this can become some of the highlight of the bottle. Now I'm going to switch to the charcoal and I'm going to think about drawing a cylinder. Right. So there's a round surface here from front to back. So I'm going to make a ellipse. And there's a same round surface down here, front to back. I'm going to make a second ellipse. I want to try and work my ellipses so I have about the same amount of ellipse on either side of my highlight. And the ellipses are over each other and about the same size. So now I'm going to connect the ellipses. This is going to represent for me the sides of the bottle. This could become the bottom of the bottle, which is not a flat, straight, horizontal line, because the bottle is curved. Right? Only the bottom is flat, but I don't actually see the bottom. It's blocked by my view of the side here. So I'm going to check my proportions. Here's how wide I've drawn this cylinder. And I could fit that width one, two times down the height of it. I'm going to hold the bottle between my fingers. It represents the width and see if the fat part of the bottle is twice as su the size of the width. It is. So that's, that's going to work pretty well. Now there's a neck of the bottle up here, which is a second little cylinder. So I'm going to make a smaller ellipse here and here and connect the sides to represent the neck of the bottle. And it seems to me that the neck flares out a little bit when it gets down here. So I'm going to just line my charcoal up with the slope and connect this and this, one cylinder and the other, with the general slope, which in reality is a bit of a curve. So I'll curve this. So that gets me my general shape of the bottle. If I wanted to check the proportions here, I might um, look at what I've drawn. I have a neck that would fit one, two, three times. It's one third of the height. And I could check the neck. And in fact, it's about a third of the height of the bottle. Now I'm going to go back to working with the kneaded eraser, the soft eraser. So we'll reestablish the highlight. I see a bit more of it on the left side of the neck, in the left side of the bottle. And then I'm going to lighten this up a little bit, but I want the highlight to stand out. So I'm going to use a combination of soft eraser without much pressure and my fingers to blend the brightest part of the highlight and the less bright parts. So I get a nice soft transition to represent the curved surface of the bottle. So I'll experiment a little bit with some different blending strategies here. I'm barely touching the surface. Right? 
moving the eraser at an angle, different directions, and so forth. Right. I'm going to leave this area fairly dark. This is where the bottle comes out towards us, remember? And the light has to go straight, so it can't curve around the side, so this is in shadow. I'm going to look at what's behind the bottle now and around the bottle. So the background seems quite a bit brighter than the bottle itself. So that suggests to me that I'm going to want to come in here and erase some of this background. Somewhere in here is the edge where the table meets the background wall. And the table is quite bright accepting an area here to the right that is the shadow the bottle is casting. So I'm going to leave a bit of that gray to represent the shadow of the bottle. a whole bunch of the table surface so that it looks brighter than the bottle. I'm going to switch to the uh, rubber eraser here. Now there's a couple of uh, adjustments I want to make. I don't like the dark black outline here because I don't see anything that's that big or that dark when I look at the bottle. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to erase towards that edge from the outside. And I'm also going to work from the inside. so that I can minimize the dark line effect. Okay. I also want to add some more shadow over here. The darkest shadow seems to me to be just past the fat part of the bottle. So I'm going to put some more charcoal in this area, spread it out a little bit. And I'm going to experiment with rubbing with my finger to get a soft edge. I'm also going to put a bit of a dark shadow under my bottle. And let's think a little bit now, again, about the light and the shadow, right? So three-quarter light coming down from above and from uh, the side. The brightest area on the cylinder is the area where the light is striking. And then there's a dark area where the light can't get to. 
Right. And then there's a sur smooth surface, continuous surface on the cylinder so that we don't have any harsh edges. We instead have a kind of a gradual transition from the brightest area to the darkest area. And there's some areas like this on the human figure. We're going to look at uh, some of the cylindrical areas of the skeleton and see how we might apply these ideas. Right. But remember, as Hale suggested in your book, that you don't want to just watch me <laughs> demonstrate these. It's good to draw these things for yourself. Set up a cylinder, set up a um, box, and draw them until you can really draw them from memory quite well, quite easily and naturally.